Welcome to episode 370 of the Membership Geeks podcast, and today I'm going behind the membership with Layla Pomper from Process Driven. You're listening to the Membership Geeks podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now here are your hosts, Mike Morrison and Callie Willows. Well, hello there. Welcome to the Membership Geeks podcast. I'm one of those membership geeks, Mike Morrison, joined as ever by the other, many would say better in many ways, membership geek, the one and only Callie Willows. Hello. And today we have a very, very special behind the membership episode. If you are new to the podcast, First of all, welcome. What took you so long to find us? Seriously, make sure you hit that subscribe button to ensure you do not miss a single episode of the show and all the juicy nuggets of membership advice and insight that we share week on week. But one of our favorite things that we do each and every month here on the show is have a real deep dive conversation with a real living live membership owner about the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs, what's working and what's not working within their membership business. It's definitely the thing I think that we we both enjoy having here on the show above all else. Yes, definitely. I love talking to our members and diving into their membership journey. And I especially loved this week's chat with Layla about her process-driven membership. Layla started the membership during the pandemic, and it's a little under two years old now, but she was quickly able to surpass her service business income and go all in on membership. Yeah, which is a great journey. That's one that we went on ourselves, starting with the service business and very quickly being able to actually surpass what that business was doing and get things rolling with the membership. So I'm looking forward to hearing what Layla's got to say. I always love these episodes because... When we're recording the intro, I genuinely haven't heard the interview. I obviously know the people who are coming on the show. They're often members of Membership Academy, so we get known about in the community. They're always members They're of always Membership members. Academy. Well, that's because every smart <laughs> membership owner is a member of Membership Academy. It's just part and parcel of being an awesome membership owner, right? Right? Nudge, nudge, wink, <laughs> wink. Um, but, yeah, I genuinely I haven't heard the interview until – we've recorded this intro. So I'm when I say I'm excited about this, I am excited about this. And with Layla's membership in particular, as we've said, I think that transition, that shift from working with clients in a service business into running a membership, I always love hearing about people who've gone through that journey. It's such a great thing when a membership allows you to make that sort of a, a move. Yeah, and I don't want to give too much away, but I think there are so many good insights and tips in this episode. I think you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, and see from the look on your face. Um, so you've got me quite curious now. I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing what Layla shares of her journey. So let's do this. Let's dive in. Today, I'm going behind the membership with Layla Pomper from Process Driven. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today, Layla. I am really looking forward to exploring your membership. Thanks for having me, Kelly. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. And with that said, could you actually start by telling us a little bit about what the membership is and what it offers? Yeah, so our membership is aptly named the Process Driven Membership because I am bad at naming things. <laughs> And uh, what it focuses on is helping people build out the kind of foundational processes and systems for their small team. Uh, the main way we do that is through teaching a tool called ClickUp. So we kind of teach people how to use that tool and then set that up as kind of the foundation for making their business a little bit less chaotic, which we could all use a little bit of. Yeah, as a ClickUp user myself, that sounds really helpful. Um, yeah, where do I sign up? How much is it? <laughs> I mean, check out the website. I think that communication of what the membership does, I know you asked earlier, you know, what's been, is there anything important to touch on? That piece has been very challenging. So I'm glad that that came across in this discussion. Yeah. And so what actually led you to create the membership? Um, so when I started out in this work, I was working as a consultant, um, Actually, that wasn't the real beginning, but the beginning of the relevant time period. And I was helping people set up ClickUp accounts. I was doing that ClickUp consulting game as a service provider, like so many do before they get into this kind of leverage model. And um, 
I accidentally, I say, started a YouTube channel because I basically just wanted free video hosting to, to create tutorials for my clients. So I started making some YouTube videos and one thing led to another. And that kind of accidental marketing led to a lot of demand for consulting. And I was just overworked. I was very quickly, my plate was very full. And I was just trying to find a different, better way to go about helping people. And in my consulting work, as I was trying to take on more clients, I started to productize accidentally. I accidentally made kind of a course that goes with the consulting. So in between sessions, they'd have some learning to do. And around that time, the idea of courses actually came into my head. And I've always been resistant to courses and dare I say it, memberships. I was always skeptical of this whole uh, digital model. And uh, at one point I was like, you know what, let me just put it out there. I started a, a what I called a wait list at the time. It was basically just, hey, would you be interested if I made some kind of course out of this? And I basically said, you know, I'm not doing anything until I reach I think it was like 85 people, which to me felt impossible. It was never going to happen. It was just kind of like a pie in the sky idea. And when that was maxed out quite quickly, that wait list was there. I decided, okay, this is, this is something here. And so uh, around the time where COVID hit and I had more free time, I found myself creating some content around this to satisfy this wait list. And from the very get-go, I did not want to create just a course because um, the tool I work with, ClickUp, so you know, updates weekly. So the idea of making a course and getting paid one time for something I'd have to update weekly felt like it would just be a nightmare and could potentially go very poorly if you know only five people ever bought it. So I uh, explored this whole membership idea. I was trying to figure out how to bring that to life. And that's kind of how the membership was born is from that wait list and realizing the only viable way to do it was to line up value delivery with revenue, receive full <laughs> and uh, go from there. And I love that you touched on that decision there between why a membership, not a course, because actually that was going to be one of my questions for you. Because I think with a topic <laughs> where it's it's something like teaching a, a software or something like that, where people yeah. think, well, once I've got it set up, that's it. I don't, I don't need anything ongoing. So why would I join a membership versus just having a course that shows me how to set it up? So I really like that you actually kind of, you had that thought process behind why is this a membership, not a course? And I'll say that's still to this day challenging at times. I think our, you know, our churn and different things like this still indicate how much our work does sometimes feel like a program. It's a start and an end and you can graduate beyond it. But um, we're working on actually trying to address the bigger problems. So that way that systemization, that, that processes and SOPs piece, that becomes more of a center point where there is that continual need. But for now, yeah, the, the math was very pragmatic. I was like, you know, only five people are ever going to buy this. If that's the case, I can't be updating it for life for, you know, a one-time course price. And so what are you actually offering each month in the membership? So right now, uh, the biggest commitment, the biggest deliverable we do monthly is a weekly live stream. And it's it's kind of like a Q&A on steroids. It's almost like a live show. We call it like our our Tuesday morning like coffee show, <laughs> and uh, it's a Q and A. It covers release notes. It covers community news. It's like a yeah, just a live event every Tuesday. Um, we also do a monthly mastermind for our members, so that's more of that kind of like the huddles that you guys have, where it's that small group discussion. And we have a new member orientation monthly as well, so that's kind of like a hey, welcome to the world. Here's what to expect. We do that live. Um, and beyond that, we'll do special events here and there, but beyond those, what, six or so things every month, we stay pretty busy. Uh, that's the event side. Uh, we also release one to two new ClickUp templates a month, and we do update the course weekly in some small way. So that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot packed in there. And so you mentioned you launched during COVID, I think you said that. So how long have you been up and running now for? So we kind of started the waitlist thing in September, 2020, and then actually really only became a real thing in 2021. So that was interesting timing, um, which, hey, gave me some time and availability. But so we've been up and running, I guess it'll be two years in September. So do you um, offer other services and products as well still, or is this all you're doing now? 
Uh, for a very long time, I would say the first six to eight months, I was doing both. So I was continuing to consult. I was creating this course. I was managing the community. I was doing everything like most people do when they start. Um, once the membership reached a level where it kind of displaced the income I was making from consulting, I was like, all right, no more one-on-one services. Um, so for a period, I was just doing some strategy sessions here and there and the membership, and then eventually just the membership. But in terms of how the the business makes money, it is the membership, number one. And number two, it is a splinter course, I guess is what you'd call it. Uh, one course that's included in the membership that we sell standalone, which we kind of use as if it was a, fr- a trial, not a free trial, but it's nominal. So if you want to test out what the, the membership is going to be like, this ClickUp beginners course teaches you the fundamental skills and how we think you should use ClickUp on a day-to-day and gives you that kind of taste of what it would look like if you wanted to build out your ClickUp in the way that we suggest. Awesome. And so have you found that effective for you having that kind of starter course? Uh, So far, so good. Um, I especially like that it allows us to be a little bit more accessible and it gives us a piece that we can then sell to multiple people in a given team, which was always a challenge. We did not create that splinter course until Oh gosh, I think a year in, I I forget the exact timeline, but um, during that first period before we had the splinter course, it was always challenging to help. So we were working with one person, maybe on a team of 10, 20, and they have all these other people. And so then they're all of a sudden having to pretend to be the expert and be the middleman for 20 people who are horribly confused and trying to figure things out. And they didn't sign up for that. So I think the splinter course has been a nice way for our um, our eventual members to test out what we do. And we've seen, I think, less refunds now that we have that because people can really get a sense of what is and isn't our style. But it's also a great way to um, support their teams, which we previously did not have a good way to do. Um, So we're like, hey, if they're struggling, just sign them up for this and then we'll take care of that. You don't have to be the middleman or pretend to be, you know, a ClickUp trainer in your free time, which most people don't have free time if they're going through this (laughs) program. (laughs) Yeah, definitely not. And so do you actually um, do anything to encourage teams to actually join the membership as well? Is the the membership for one person or do you have kind of team options there? Right now, the membership is really focused on whoever in the organization is the advocate for like systems and process stuff. That's typically, sometimes it's the owner on smaller teams. Often it's, you know, an OBM, a super techie VA who maybe offers these as services we tend to have one to two people per team join in the membership side just because it's more of that architecting architecture. I'm really making up words today. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> so, right, I love it. <laughs> I do that but, all um, the time. <laughs> okay, good, good. So you've got the memo. Um, but very different than the splinter course where I do think it's a little bit broader just because of the, the, the depth isn't as deep. And do you have a team helping you or is it all you still? Thankfully, I have a team now. Um, that... I think if there's one thing for anyone who's looking into this model, I do not know how I, I don't know how I did it as long as I did with just me and a VA. Um, In hindsight, I should have done this all much earlier, but I do have a team now. There is, oh gosh, seven of us, but many people are half time or quarter time, which I think most people overlook. They think it all has to be like full-time employees. Um, So yes, we have a team that helps. I'm still the only person creating content, which is like the bottleneck. I think that's pretty normal. But for all other aspects, um, I've got backup, which is really nice. Awesome. So what kind of roles have you got in the team then? We have a operations lead. So it's kind of like our OBM or so for the whole whole company. She's in-house. We have um, three folks in marketing. So doing content, writing, and graphic design. Inside the membership piece, we have a, um, we just hired a community coach. So hopefully by the time this comes out, it'll be a raving success. But right now it's, it's our very first time trying to hire someone who's going to be kind of um, a content master who can help coach other people along. And we also have a support inbox person who's just like the master of all bugs and issues and billing stuff. Uh, We also have a VA. I think that's everybody and everybody tends to wear, you know, one and a half to two hats. But the main thing that I think the help comes in is just having other people to answer those inquiries and help with the volume, which I did not expect going into this, how quickly 
membership model, the administration of it can really become exponential where it's just like, just so much communication. Uh, I don't, I did not expect that getting into it. So I'd love to talk about that a little then, because you mentioned there about kind of that membership communication kind of taking off and things. So that implies kind of you're you're getting a lot of inquiries from the membership. You're getting a lot of kind of members uh, contacting you, which kind of generally is a good thing because it does yeah. mean there's, there's, a, there's a level of success there if you're getting enough numbers, but it is that kind of d- double-edged sword. So as you say, you've got that kind of support network there in the team. How else are you kind of fostering that kind of um, community support and peer-to-peer support? I think peer-to-peer support has been one of the hardest things for us to build because of the topic Um, because there's kind of this, you know, the people who are really active are usually really new in the space. And so I think we've, we've struggled more with that, particularly because our membership uh, started off using Slack as our community forum. And as you probably, you're like, yeah, yeah, I've seen this all the time. Um, when we switched over to a WordPress based solution and we switched to a forum engagement really went down, visibility went down. Um, so I think ever since that switch, it's definitely been a more challenging area for us. But um, I think the main thing that we're looking to do and that we're continuing to do is shouting people out and kind of, I think being like the hostess at a party. So where you're like, oh, have you met John? He, you know, kind of connecting people together. Um, that's really what we're hoping for. And I think it's more challenging in this kind of tech-based space to help people feel confident sharing tips or sharing solutions when so many of them, there is sometimes a right or wrong answer. So that's why expanding into these territories that are more gray, like process and systems and change, that's where we usually see more collaboration. Um, And doing things like behind the scenes tours that we'll do every so often, or the masterminds are usually where we can get people to share where they're at, but it is harder in the forum environment. And I think some of that's inherent to the topic as well, because you mentioned before people joining, they're usually joining because they don't have a ton of time and they're trying to kind of streamline things so that they have more time. And they're usually joining for your expertise as well, not necessarily to be part of a a community. Yeah, I think that was a hard thing to swallow, too, because I think many of us want to create this and we think, you know, it is a community. We do want to have this. But I think something I've started to recognize over this current year is just sometimes it's just a phase of life type of attitude where you're at certain topics just don't lend themselves as much to, you know, the collective thought. And so that's why masterminds and those events where we can really push that kind of activity is great. And then the rest of the month, it's like, it's okay. Ask a question. We'll answer it when you're here. Don't add something else to your too full to-do list. And so you mentioned you've just started taking on a community coach. Yeah. So is that similar to a community manager or is this somebody who's mainly going to be doing things like calls? How's that planned out for you? Oh, so this is going to be a fun uh, forecast here. So at the time of recording, we're just getting started. So by the time this comes out, maybe it'll be, like I said, a raving success or I'll wish I didn't talk about this. But uh, the idea of the coach is to have somebody who knows what we do in and out. And rather than just a community manager, which we have actually had in the past, where their job is just to facilitate connection and, like you said, foster that community, uh, what we wanted to do is kind of lean into what people want from us at this stage, which is expertise and help and pointing and decision making and that kind of stuff. So this person is going to be a subject matter expert, um, much like I am, and they're going to be helping with pointing people in the right direction, being the concierge of content. And jumping on calls with folks if they're stuck, but all through the sense of helping people get answers and learn. I kind of view this person as a tutor or a TA or a teacher, uh, not as much as like the events management, community management that I originally thought we should have had. But based on our conversation about community, you can see kind of the evolution that we've been through and why this felt like the better fit for our members. Yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea as well. And it's that extra high touch as well. Um, yes. that extra access. And, and so what are you actually charging for the membership? So right now uh, we have two plans, uh, quarterly and annually. Uh, we'll see if that stays by the time this comes out in September, but uh, our quarterly plan is $399 US a quarter. And our annual plan is $999 per year. So it's a little bit more expensive, but we're actually uh, much cheaper than other programs of a similar type. But we are, I think, at the higher end of the membership model 
which is kind of an interesting spot to be because in the memberships, I chat with other people in, you know, in the academy and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so high. And then I look around at our space and it feels really low. So we're in a, this strange little middle spot. And what made you decide to go with a quarterly price rather than a monthly price? Yeah. So uh, the main, well, at first I'll say the first reason was because uh, we were including a lot of downloadables and like many people creating content, I felt scared when I was starting and I was like, oh gosh, someone's going to come in and get 35 of our templates, which could each retail for $300 and you know, that kind of thing, which in hindsight is a silly thing to worry about. People are going to do what they're going to do. And I think experience has taught me that, but the reason we've stuck with it and we've continued to offer this is because we wanted to have a way for the membership to be accessible. But at the same time, uh, I wanted it to line up with how long it actually takes to see any result. My fear, and my fear is based on working with a lot of teams one-on-one. And you've seen it if you're using ClickUp. First week or two of ClickUp, people are like dazzled. They love the new tool. Oh, it's so great. Then week three and four hits and they are just miserable. Nothing works. Nothing, you know, nothing's intuitive. They hate this. They hate that. Same thing goes with SOPs or process stuff. And my thought of having somebody have a renewal fee happen right in the middle of that deep despair, (laughs) it just seemed like it would not go well. So I wanted, I've always been saying that folks, it takes like two months to get used to ClickUp or any new project management system. And so I wanted our um, billing to line up at or after that adjustment period. And two months felt really weird. So I did three months and went with quarterly because it was one of the things you guys suggested in the academy. And kind of the rest is history. Uh, I would say we started off with only annual and we introduced that quarterly for accessibility reasons, but that's why we didn't go to monthly. Yeah. And I think that's a really good thought process there, knowing your audience so well (laughs) that that you know that kind of that month mark is actually kind of a bit of a tricky, <laughs> tricky mark oh. for people to go through <laughs> when it comes to actually using the platform that you're teaching. So I think that just goes to show how important it is to actually know your audience and, and their pain points as well, really. Um, so with that, I'm curious, are you really targeting people who are just coming into ClickUp? You want them kind of right at the start of their journey where they're they're changing platforms or they're kind of just getting started or are you kind of open to people who've been using it for years but maybe just want to kind of streamline what they're doing or check their best practices and things well i will say thanks to our my business here is six months younger than clickup i think just about so almost everybody who uses clickup is new to it (laughs) um but just like any skill i think getting folks who are brand new is often easier because they don't have all these bad habits. Um, But we have both extremes. So we have folks who've been using ClickUp since the start. We have people who just opened it up last week, saw a YouTube video and purchased, you know, the day after. And uh, we're equipped to help either person. I think kind of like the the academy, how you guys have your stages. We more or less have a similar thing of here's the basics, here's level two, here's level three. Um, So I don't think we have a strong preference on either side. The biggest thing is folks who are willing to kind of re-examine what they thought they knew. Uh, We teach a bit of a a strange method, but one that tends to be pretty consistent in how simple and helpful it is. So I think the open-mindedness is really our main requirement, not so much your tenure. We do at this point um, ask that someone's decided that this is the tool they want to use. That pre-decision point is a little weird for us. But uh, we're hoping by 2023, fingers crossed, we'll be able to support some other uh, tools. So if you decide ClickUp isn't the right one, you want to try Monday, we're hoping to be able to support that hopefully next year. And so when it comes to membership growth, then what's working well for you when it comes to getting new members in the door? I wish I had a great answer to this. (laughs) Um, but when it comes to marketing as someone who is effectively an operations person who happens to market, uh, I don't think I necessarily have the best strategies, but what has worked for some reason is right now, YouTube, um, that is how this whole thing started. This is how this whole thing has continued to grow. So we currently do a weekly YouTube video. I did twice weekly up until I think this year. So uh, lots and lots of YouTube videos. I think we're at 235 or 240 we're filming this week. So um, those YouTube videos are our main source of traffic. They're the main source of email list growth. And that by intern is our main way to get members. I would say 
80 plus percent of our members. That's how they found us. Um, and anyone who's kind of like me, kind of a, a hopeless marketer and looking to just get things out there, providing that value-based how-to content based on terms people are searching for. I mean, if I could do it, anyone can. I think that was a really effective way for us to get our name out there. But as we are kind of growing and growing, we're starting to have to figure out, okay, how do we grow up and put our big marketer pants on and figure out how to actually market this beyond just organic content? Uh, I think that's the next frontier for us. Yeah. And I love that you choose working so well for you. And I'd love to know, I think with a lot of people when they're starting their membership or even once they're up and running, there's always that kind of question over how much do you give away for free? Like how do you decide what should be free content versus what's in the membership? And how do you put out, especially YouTube videos, how do you put out YouTube videos without members thinking, well, I can just watch the YouTube channel, for example. So how have you kind of dealt with that? It's really hard. Um, I think the membership geeks, you guys put out such amazing content. So you've obviously, you're a great example. And I feel like I found a lot of inspiration by consuming all the free content you guys produced and seeing how you, you know, created that opt-in and drew people in from that. Um, I don't think we're nearly as good at that, but the line that we currently draw is recognizing that the main value of the membership is conciseness and a linear path. And in many ways, I don't think it matters if all of the same content is available on the YouTube channel. Uh, not to say that it is, it's definitely not. But even if it were, I don't think I know, have that resistance any longer like I used to thinking, oh my gosh, I can't talk about this framework because it's in the membership. Um, I We give away almost everything that we do for free. <laughs> but when you come in the membership, what you get is that in a sequential order with the downloadables, with the resources, with in the most concise and efficient layout and you get support the entire way through it. Um, I think when I ask people and we actually have this as a feedback form that goes out to every member, I think around 60 days in, one of the questions we ask in that feedback form is, you know, what would you say to someone who's considering just watching our YouTube videos for free? Because I struggled with this question and by and large, we keep getting versions of the same answer, which I think hearing it from the members is how I finally understood the difference is that, you know, that path. Uh, I also think that one thing people don't realize about YouTube is that YouTube videos become popular and really mature usually after three months. (laughs) And so because of the nature of what we do, um, the timeliness is also a big dividing factor between the two pieces of content. One gets updated weekly, one is, you know, from last year. I think that's a really good defi- um, kind of distinction there, kind of the convenience and support in the membership versus just kind of doing it yourself with the with the YouTube channel, essentially. And so switching gears a little bit now, I'd love to know if you've had any particular challenges along the way. I've had so many challenges along the way. <laughs> um, I think like many folks who get into this world, I was so excited about the idea of having a model where I got to spend most of my time sitting quietly in a room by myself, talking to no one and playing with technology. That sounded great. (laughs) Um, But I think that also became one of the biggest challenges. I thought I was pretty tech savvy. I thought I knew what I was getting into. Um, You really have to know so much to do this model and do it really well. And I think I didn't fully appreciate how much learning would be required of me, even if you job out certain things to truly understand how does WordPress work? How does, you know, continuing education work for adults? How do adults learn? What kind of downloadables make sense? There is just so much knowledge that um, you need to be in this space, which is why resources like the Academy, uh, the renewal was recently. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm in there again, (laughs) because there's really nowhere else that addresses it. Um, So I think that was the biggest challenge is just the continuing education required to do this well and not be one of those, dare I say, those online courses that everyone is afraid to take. Um, I think the second factor is also related to education. And that's just, we create content around something that changes frequently, which is just inherently super challenging because that means we're never an expert on it. Um, Nothing's ever up to date. It's always at least, you know, three days behind. And I think that was a challenge that I did anticipate, but continues to be like, whew, this is heavy. <laughs> yeah, you've got that continuous kind of update cycle with, with ClickUp in particular, which are 
presumably will slow down as it does kind of kind of reach its kind of peak of of features but yeah they're definitely pushing out the updates frequently these days <laughs> yeah it it makes it a bit more challenging than if we had a membership about you know how to sing or something a little bit more you know timeless it's yeah. definitely a challenge <laughs> definitely and so if that's kind of been a challenge what's been your highlight or the favorite thing about having the membership what's it allowed you to to do i I absolutely love the compounding effect of memberships. Um, that's what I love about YouTube. That's what I love about process and systems, which is you know my my subject matter really. Um, I absolutely love anything where you can put a little effort in and you see the snowball start to build. And you know I try to s- make people like that about SOPs, but people still hate SOPs. I'll, I'll win them over eventually. But with the membership, I think it's the same way. You know, you create one course, you create one lesson, you answer one question in the forum. I think the forum's the biggest place I've seen this. And it's there. You can search it. I can search it. My members can search it. And that has been really amazing. It's like building this archive of knowledge from your whole team and having it in one search bar. Um, that is the most rewarding thing because even with YouTube and stuff like that, it doesn't achieve that same effect. It's really cool to be able to say, you know, we have over a thousand FAQs about ClickUp or about process that you cannot find anywhere else. Like that's a really cool thing to be able to say and to be able to grow that by, you know, 10 questions, every Q and a call. That's, that's the best part. And so what impact would you say having the membership has had on life and business overall for you then? I would say that it is, you know, made my business a business. Prior to this, I was a service provider and I could have grown that in a certain way, but it would have been very people dependent, meaning people in the business, more like an agency, people that you're serving, like your clients. And as someone, despite how much I yammer on on YouTube, (laughs) I'm pretty introverted. I, I remember talking to a mastermind saying, you know, I have a competitive disadvantage we're talking to people. I I just, I'm wiped out after two hours, I'm done. And so I had a very clear ceiling on that business for me personally, before I would just either burn out, hate my business, or just be unable to earn more or to do more. And so I think if it hadn't been for kind of this membership or leverage model, I probably would have pivoted. I don't know that I would have stuck it through and gotten to where we are today. So uh, the membership has given me a way to help people without having to be on 500 calls a month. And it's also given us that sense of stability. So the recurring revenue from a membership is really nice. Uh, The ability to sell when you sleep, people talked about that. And I was like, oh, that sounds nice. Sure. But it's really, really a nice thing to be able to go on vacation or we just had the the, um, holiday weekend here in the States and to come back and to know that, oh my gosh, you know, people still joined over the weekend. That's so nice to see. I think that is a really stabilizing and comforting feeling to have, to just have a business that allows you to play to your strengths and not have to be always on. Yeah, I love that. And so as we start to wrap up then, I'd love to know what your goals for the membership are. Oh gosh, <laughs> world domination. <laughs> um I think right now, our goals are to increase in size, not ridiculously, but to increase in size a little bit. So right now we are about 600 members. And I think my hope is to achieve about 1500. That's kind of where I want the membership to end up. I think much bigger would be a little crazy. And I also want our membership to really get into the the process and system space that has always been there, but has always been the footnote. ClickUp has been, you know, like the shiny thing that people come for. And then we're like, by the way, here's your vegetables process. Um, I'd like to be able to switch that. Uh, So kind of next year in the coming years, our hope through marketing and also through the membership is to really focus it on, you're a small team. You need systems and processes to be able to stay sane. Here's how you do it. By the way, ClickUp is a tool to do that. Here's how. Oh, here's another tool to do that. Here's how. Uh, We say that at process driven, we say that, you know, it's about the system, not the software, but if we only support one software, we're kind of hypocritical in some way. So I think that's really what I would like to see is to really obsess over that problem, obsess over what small teams are facing, help them with whatever tool that is. Uh, that's where we want to get to. Awesome. 
And so finally, then, I would love to know what's one tip you would give somebody who is thinking of creating a membership site? Besides joining the academy? <laughs> yes. Besides would, that. Okay. Um, well, I would join that first. And then after you do that, um, I think I think uh, conversations with members. Uh, one thing I did for the first, oh my gosh, year and a half, two years? No, it's not full two years yet. So it must've been about a year and a half because it just recently stopped. But I did one-on-one calls with every member. It first was every member, then it was every annual member. And then eventually I was like, all right, I am dying. This is not what I want. But 25 minute one-on-one call with every single member where your job is mainly to listen. And if you can offer a few tips or point them in the right direction, I think that was absolutely invaluable to the membership development. I think it told me what a feedback form never could. It was exhausting to be clear, especially as someone who got into this to not have, you know, hundreds of consulting calls a day, but it, that was probably the best practice I had because you can read all the books, you can take all the membership Academy courses, you'll learn so much, but you need to hear from the members what they need. And to do that, especially when it, it isn't what you thought. Like I thought we need a community. We're hearing, no, we want expertise. Like there's so many things I can point to where my assumptions were entirely wrong. And I would not have known that if I didn't have those conversations. And I mean, literally not just a feedback form. Yeah. I think that's such a great tip there. And were those conversations as part of your onboarding or was this later on in the process of people having been members for a while? You know, it's funny. It started off as part of onboarding. And so they'd get it as soon as they joined to be like, here, book your call. And then over time, I got a little wiser and I put it so that it happened after the refund period ended. So it wasn't immediate. It was three weeks in or something like that. First to avoid, you know, refunds and the cost that would be, but also to give people some time to dig in. And uh, it worked really well. And we kind of moved past it and stopped doing it. When I started realizing people were buying the membership just for the welcome call, (laughs) that started happening a little bit. I was like, all right, okay, we need to uh, pull the plug on this one. But no, I think that's a great tip. And yeah, really good advice. Because yeah, as you say, you can think that this is what your members all want, or, you know, this is what everybody says is Mm -hmm. is what you should do. But until you actually hear from from your members, you're kind of just guessing, really. Yeah. And your members are so weird. You know, I think we all forget how weird people are. (laughs) And so you need to like tune into their weirdness, get on their frequency. And that's not the same as, you know, what the frequency is of the people reading the business book or so on. We need to appreciate weirdness. (laughs) Yes, definitely. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Layla. I've loved hearing more about your membership and I'm excited to to see where it goes next. And yeah, for anyone listening who wants to check out Layla's work, join that awesome membership to get the most out of ClickUp. Um, It is at Process driven.co isn't it yes it is awesome thank you so much again Leila thanks for having me Kelly this is great big big thank you once again to Leila for joining me on today's episode and sharing her membership journey so far yeah that was a fantastic episode I'm really really interested on hearing how the community coach that she's brought in ends up working out for Leila's membership that sounds like such a great and valuable addition that she's made. Yeah, definitely. Adding that extra high touch support is never going to be a bad thing for your members. But one thing in particular I really liked as well is how Layla knows her audience and how in-depth she is with that knowledge. Yeah, that really, really came across. I think the decision process she talked about, um, about why she went with a quarterly rather than a monthly option in terms of her membership pricing, That was really interesting to see where her brain was at within all that. And the tip that she gave at the end about actually speaking to your members on calls, especially in those early days of the membership, is really, really important takeaway too. Yeah, definitely. I really love talking with Layla and I have no doubt I'll be joining her membership to shore up our own ClickUp processes as well. Oh, you're just going to end up confusing me. I've just <laughs> I've just figured it all out. You can blame Layla now. <laughs> yeah, blame Layla. No, no, we're, we're depending on Layla to fix it all. Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, so, yeah, can't wait to see what comes next for Layla and her membership. Big, big thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Membership Geeks podcast. And we hope that you will join us next week for another fantastic episode. We'll see you then. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Geeks podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. 
Membership Academy is the original membership about memberships, and it's the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing, and running a successful online membership business. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be and you need some help making it a reality, or whether your website is already up and running and you're looking for ways to grow and attract new members, then Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. Not only do you get access to our step-by-step membership roadmap, our extensive training library and exclusive member-only discount and tools, you'll also become part of our supportive active community of membership owners that will help you along the way in your journey with feedback, encouragement, and advice. All of this and more make Membership Academy the number one place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership business. Check it out and join the community at membershipacademy.com.